fucking fast back. <laughs> When's your birthday? August. August what? Oh, that's right, he's a Virgo. December 2nd. I'm the 25th of August. No, he's sad. Yeah. He's a mama. You know what happened with the last one? It gets there in the day. No, he ate her. That's a set. Are you serious? They have both all the time. They're attached to each other. I have a letter. Thank you, though. Appreciate that. That heat feels good. Are you I'm just getting over being sick. I was at home all weekend. Like, in bed. Three days. Yeah. They're like, why are you out here in the cold? I'm like, I need to be a part of this. I'm sorry. So I will grab myself and all kinds of work. children are our children. That's, a, that's a kind of an idea that, that speaks to the deepest level of our common humanity. All children are our children. So in a sense, we're all responsible for our children, <laughs> as it should be. Almost 400 years ago, a poet wrote, no man is an island unto itself. And in that same poem, he said, Every man's death diminishes me, for I am involved in mankind. As we're all involved in mankind, like a wave is involved in the ocean, we are still all God's children. And so if if every man's death diminishes us, what, what can we say about the murder of a child? Another poet closer in time to us said, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage beats the dying of the light. And I am feeling such rage right now, and such anguish and grief, thinking about these bright spirits cut off before their time. And then, uh, but thankfully, there's going to be someone here who can help us right, help us figure out how to change this horrible state of affairs. I, I, I have so many ideas, but they're all bad. But this cannot stand. Cannot stand. We cannot allow this. Who are we if we can't protect our children? And who are we if we don't stand up, raise our voices, demand to be heard, act, 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 uh, act politically, act in because these acts of terrorism are political acts. Make no mistake. And so we, we must make this change ourselves because nobody else will. We've seen that so many times. And, and in closing, I just want to point out that Christ threw the moneylenders out of the temple. We can do no less. I'd like to introduce Helen Rosen from the Moms Demand Action on Gun Sense in America, <coughs> who's going to give us some ideas on how we can all, together and individually, make a change. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Is that OK? 
okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm okay. Right there. You can see I'm not used to doing this. Um, we're thrilled to be here, and we hope that we can give you some actions to take tonight that will let you put your frustration and anger into doing something. So if you haven't heard about Moms Demand Action, for instance, we've been around for five years. It was started by a mom, a mother of five children, who was outraged after the shootings in Sandy Hook and decided she would start an organization to do something. In the five years since she started, four million members are part of MOMS. And what's amazing is that almost all of us are volunteers and working really hard to do something to make a change, which is something you can do too. So I'm going to tell you a few numbers and statistics tonight if you haven't heard them before or if you have. They're pretty overwhelming. 96 people a day die from guns. Seven of those people are children or teens under the age of 19. And excuse me for a minute. 86% um, of the guns owned in the world are owned by Americans. Americans have a 25% greater chance of being killed by a gun than people in comparable developed countries. Something else that's overwhelming is that 50 women a month are shot by guns from domestic partners. So these are pretty horrible statistics and we all know that what happened last week was pretty horrible and we have to make a change. You, some of you have the papers that we've handed out, and if you haven't, be sure to get one because we actually give you actions that you can take to make a change. Everything from staying home and making telephone calls or coming to rallies, but particularly calling your lawmakers. Moms Demand Action is a bipartisan group, and we work to change laws into gun-sensible laws. And what we're going to do now, what the organization has taken a stand on, it's a five-point action plan called Throw Them Out. So you can hashtag Throw yes. Them Out. And that's what we want to do is throw out all of those politicians who are getting money from the NRA and who are talking to them and listening to them. So things you can do is call your representatives, even though we're here in California and we have Democratic representatives, Call them and tell them they have to keep on working to pass gun sensible laws. Call representatives in other areas. If you call, tell your friends and families who are in other states to call their representatives and tell them if they continue to take money from the NRA, they're going to be voted out of office. Yes. And that's yeah. what we need to do. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is turn this over to my partner, Molly, who's also another Marin mom. And she's going to tell you some additional actions you can take, as well as some legislation that is now pending. Hi, everyone. Um, one of the uh, types of laws that Moms Demand Action is really going to be pushing and helping states to push are what's called red flag laws. And you may have heard of these. Um, red flag laws empower families and law enforcement to ask a judge to temporarily block people who pose a threat from having guns. California is one of five states that currently has a red flag law. There are 18 other states, including Florida, that are considering such a law. Moms Demand Action will be working to help those states and others pass red flag laws. Had Florida had a red flag law, Parkland probably wouldn't have happened because there were so many people who knew uh, 
um, that Nicholas Cruz was dangerous. So that's going to be top on our agenda. Now, as for what the nasty NRA is up to and what we're going to be fighting, the first is called Concealed Carry Reciprocity. It's really scary, and it has passed the House already. It would force all 50 states to recognize the decisions that other states have made about who can carry a gun. Keep in mind that 12 states have permitless carry, just anyone can carry. California, on the other hand, as you probably all know, has some of the, the strictest requirements and you can only get a permit under the very narrowest of circumstances. California would have to honor the requirements of all these other states. So Joe Schmo from Louisiana, who can get a gun, you know, he can come to California because he has a permit that they've said he can carry a gun. We would have to honor that, even if Joe Schmo might be a domestic abuser or a convicted felon. We're going to be working to fight that. There's also the gun silencer bill, which those on the other side have uh, called the Hearing Protection Act. Uh, that will make it easier for people like convicted felons, domestic abusers, and other dangerous peoples to buy silencers. Another thing the NRA is trying to do, or some of the things they work on, is to um, push legislation that forces colleges and universities to allow guns on campus. We have been fighting this tooth and nail, and we've won some and we've lost some, but we're hopeful that we can keep turning it around. Another one is stand your ground. The NRA is pushing for laws that allow a person to kill to defend themselves, even if there is a clear and safe way to avoid doing so. We are fighting those. How are we fighting them? What can you do? First, I just want to point out, um, and this is something I've learned when I came to moms, um, we make sure to talk to other people about common sense gun laws and gun safety. We don't use the words gun control. Gun control is a trigger for gun owner, for many gun owners, and that's not what we're trying to do. We emphasize that we're not trying to take away people's guns. We're trying to create common sense gun laws and gun safety. So just when you're talking to other people, especially people who have different views than you, try to avoid using the words gun control. Um, so first thing you should do is take out your phone and text ACT, maybe you want to do it right now, to 644 Three. I'm going to give you a minute and I'm going to say it again. You text ACT to 64433. And that will get you connected with moms and get you down the path. The other thing you should do is find us, Marin Moms Demand Action, on Facebook and request to join our page. We put three people through an approval process. That's really for safety reasons. We do get some wackadoos that try to get on there. Uh -huh. um, if Once you're on our Facebook page, you will find out about everything. All the events that are going on, the legislation that we're fighting, the phone banking, whatever we're doing, you will find out about it and you'll be able to join it. You can tell your children to text STUDENTS to 64433. Within 48 hours after Parkland, we had so many students calling into Moms Demand Action that they have um, started another group, a subgroup called Students Demand Action, which I am super excited about. I, I just think the youth voices are gonna be uh, really important. Some things that are going on with moms for you to know about in the future. On March 24th is the March for Our Lives. I don't know all the details. I believe it's going to be in San Francisco. Um, another thing we do, we have house parties. 
Uh, that's where we get new members. That's where we basically do what we're doing here tonight. Educate people about moms and tell them how they can get involved. If you're on Facebook and you say, I've got 20, 30, 40 friends who I know want to be more involved, let us know. You can have a house party. Uh, we also give be, what we call Be Smart presentations. SMART stands for Secure Guns, Model Responsible Gun Behavior, Ask About the Presence of Guns in a Home, Recognize the Risks of Teen Suicide, and Tell Peers to Be Smart. The Be Smart presentation is aimed at keeping our kids safe. We also have what's called our Gun Sense Action Network. It's basically a phone banking network. I highly recommend it. I've been doing it for a couple of years. And Moms Demand Action is an incredibly organized um, organization, and they, will, they provide you with scripts and all the background on whatever law the, is the law of the week that we're, or the bill of the week that we're trying to either push through or fight against. Um, when you're part of the Gun Sense Action Network, you're calling in to say Georgia, to constituents in Georgia to say, hey, did you know there's a bill that's going to force George, you know, University of Georgia to allow guns on campus? Do you want that? If no, can I connect you to your representative right now? And this, there's a system, and literally you press star or whatever it is, and you're immediately that person is connected to their representative. Um, so I highly recommend the Gun Sense Action Network. Um, and we're also going to have a lobby day on April 9th. And so far we already have 300 people signed up, and I'm sure it's growing, to go to Sacramento and lobby. Um, Assemblyman Ting from the San Mateo Burlingame area has, is bringing forth a bill, which he brought earlier and it was vetoed by Governor Brown, uh, but he's bringing it back. And it would expand California's red flag law to not only allow family members and police officers to ask a judge to block someone from having a gun, it would expand it to high school educators, college educators, and mental health professionals. And as we know, had that been the case in Florida, those teachers, principals at that school could have sought a restraining order. Why do you veto that? Those are just um, some of the ways you can get involved. I hope uh, the handout gives you um, more information Please don't hesitate to, once you're on Facebook, just shout out. And there are people who will answer your questions. There's an amazing network of volunteers. At There's the Marin chapter, then there's the California chapter, there's National. It's just incredibly well organized. Um, and thank you all so much for coming tonight. I, I'm really, my heart is uh, sad. And on the other hand, I feel some hope seeing all of you here. Um, I'm going to reintroduce Phil. Uh, he's got more of a presentation for you. Thank you. Thank you. So making this more, less about numbers and more about humans, uh, I'd like to introduce you to all of the victims from Parkland. <coughs> yeah, I think uh, what I'd like to do, because the light is kind of, uh, as I read this, as I, as I show it and read it, I'm going to pass it along. And if you guys will take a look at this and see the humanity of these people these bright spirits. This is Peter Wang, 15 years old. He came from attending West Point. He, was, he died in his junior uh, officer training corps uniform on Wednesday, holding the door open to allow others to escape. The U.S. Military Academy honors his dream of being a West Point cadet with a 2025 letter of acceptance. Carmen Chantrum, 16 years old. 
freshman, aspired to go to the University of Florida. She taught herself, she taught herself German, loved playing the piano, and was a national merit scholarship semifinalist. Alex Schachter, 14, freshman, aspired to go to the University of Connecticut, passionate about music and a member of the marching band and orchestra. He was a happy kid and had many, many friends. Looks like it. <laughs> Helena Ramsey, 17, junior, loved cats and music, it was extremely funny and selfless, she instructed her friend to grab a book and shield herself, a tip that ultimately saved her friend's life. <laughs> Meadow Jade Paula, 18, senior, planned to attend Lynn University. Describes as beautiful, warm, loving, and intelligent, whose sense of humor and loyalty to friends made her beloved by Elena Petty, 14, freshman. She volunteered in her church and also after Hurricane Irma, member of the junior ROTC. Her family says she was confident, loving, and inspiring. Joaquin Oliver, 17, senior, avid sports fan, loved football, basketball, Black. soccer, and hip hop. On January 20th, 2017, Joaquin and his family became U.S. citizens. He was emotionally proud, proclaiming his love for the USA. Gina Montalto, 14, a freshman, a dancer, illustrator, enthusiastic reader, a member of the Color Guard and Girl Scouts, an active member of the church, and volunteered with children. Kara Lawford, 14, freshman, loved Irish dancing and going to the beach. She was a wonderful student, but she leads behind her brother and eight-year-old twin cousins whom she was extremely close with. Luke Hoyle, 15, freshman, loved basketball, chicken McNuggets, mac and cheese, video games, and nuggets. <laughs> Happy, laid-back team with his whole life ahead of him. He's behind a sister and a brother. Chris Hexham, 49 years old, athletic director and wrestling coach. Stone Douglas. He sped towards the shots and allegedly tried to disarm the shooter. He's behind his wife and two sons. Jamie Guttenberg, 14, favorite color was orange, a passionate dancer and dog lover, wanted to be a mother or an occupational therapist. Aaron Feist, 37 years old, assistant football coach, mentor, friend, hero, put his students, neighbors, friends, and family first. Grant Tord, the shooter and threw himself in front of students to protect them. Who says Americans don't care about what I want? Nicholas Dwarf, 17, senior, aspirations of being an Olympic swimmer, described as joyful and full of life. Leaves behind a younger sibling who was also injured in the shoot. <coughs> Martin Duque Anguiano, 14, freshman, described as funny and outgoing, sweet and fair, a brother and son, leaves behind four siblings.
Scott Bigel, 35 years old, geography teacher, cross country team coach, camp counselor, hero. He died saving students at summer dollars. Alisa Al Hadef, 14, freshman, loved soccer on the debate team, thought about being a doctor. If we, could, if we could now gather together a moment of silence and respect and reverence for these, these great spirits cut down the public column.
Or you have hidden it probably did. She had to hide her too.
Now Leo's got a heated dub, bro. Uh, now we're at 226. Motherfucker. Last time I talked to you about it. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, I mean, on the page, like 125,000. Yeah. Last uh, 226 time. watching. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I meant, like, likes on the page. So last time I talked to you about it was, like, before my son was born, you had, like, you just hit 50K. Yeah. Good for you. It's
fall, you will fall alone into sin. Then who's to guide you? If I knew the way, I would take you on.